I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today we'll be looking at how to paint fantasy skin tones in Photoshop. If you like what you see, go ahead and show us with a like. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? We put out five new videos every week, all focused on advanced level photo manipulation. With that, let's look at what we have here. <music> So we have another versatile but straightforward photo effect. Versatile in both color options and application. Um, here we are painting an iridescent, almost glittery skin effect, shifting with blues and purples and pink tones. However, you can use similar techniques for both opalescent skin tones or more makeup inspired effects. I usually don't cover any aspects of an image that isn't the focus of the tutorial to avoid muddying the waters. Today, however, I am going to flip through the color grade real quick given how much it affects the skin tone um, that we are creating. Real quick, we have an order from bottom to top, a horror blue color lookup set to 5% opacity, a second set to crisp winter at 25% opacity, a third set to film stock, 18% opacity. A fourth set to Fuji 500D, 25% opacity. Teal orange plus contrast at 24% opacity. Foggy night at 24% opacity as well, a favorite of mine. The second Kodak LUT option at 39% opacity. And finally, a selective layer affecting the cyans, blues, whites, neutrals, and blacks. So now let's move on to the skin. I'm going to hide the freckles as I paint as well as the color grade um, as they tend to get in the way and slow me down at least a tiny bit. We are going to create a new layer above any color adjusting layers and paint our swatches. You could of course make proper Photoshop swatches, but I find this to be just more convenient and easier. You want to pick the colors you want to introduce to the model's skin. Here we are going to use three. A purple toned blue, a blue toned purple, and a purple toned pink. Next, let's create a new layer and clip it into the subject, setting the layer to soft light and bringing the opacity down to about 65% or so. You'll want to adjust the opacity as you go, and the opacity will determine the intensity of the color. So fiddle around with it, 65% is just a good starting point. Grab a fluffy round brush and bring the flow down to 10% or less. If you are using a mouse, I'd even recommend 1%. You want to build things up slowly, uh, with some spots being more intense than others. For this image, I wanted to make sure her original skin tone still remained. So it kind of goes from her brown skin tone to blue to purple to then pink. I am hitting mostly the high and midpoints of her face. Take your time here and be calculated. We aren't just adding blue splotches. Once you have a fair amount of blue laid down, create a new layer set to soft light as well and start painting in your middle color, purple in this case. You want to build up the purple just like the blue, using it as a transition color. Again, hitting the high points of the face and using it to help the blue transition from area to area. I like to keep each color on its own layer so you can erase or restart as needed. Uh, however, there are some downsides. Doing everything on one layer would make blending the colors a bit easier and more natural. I say try both, see which works best for you. As for me, there is a reason all my PSDs have anywhere from 100 to 800 layers. With your purple laid, you can then start adding in your pink to the very high points of the face and the brighter areas, the subject's natural highlight. Again, on a new layer, I went with overlay this time to get the most out of the vibrant pink. You don't have to paint this one by one and in order. Go back and forth and refine the other colors as you paint the next. The process is very easy, but not quick. Or more so, the longer you take, the more patience you have, the better the result is going to be. You are also going to want to repeat this on any body parts as well. Keep working until you have a nice base of color. Once happy, we can move on to the highlights. 
Again, we are going for a medium high level intensity for the skin, not quite metallic, but more than dewy. First, let's lay down some base highlights using a soft round brush set to a low flow on a layer set to overlay. Just like with the color, we want to build things up slowly, bringing out her natural highlights. Next, let's create a curves layer and bring up the highlights. Clipping the layer into the subject above all previous uh, subject layers. Double click and adjust the blend if setting so that the curves layer is only affecting the model's highlights. The settings will change from subject to subject. Just make sure to hold alt to split those toggles up so you can control the harshness of the fade. The closer the toggles, the harsher the fade. Blend if is my favorite tool to use and my least favorite to explain. Go ahead and invert the curves mask using Control or Command I and then mask in more highlights. Uh, you can duplicate the curves layer, uh, resetting the layer mask to black and do one more round of highlight intensifying. You can also adjust these layers opacity if you find the highlights are a bit too harsh or skip them altogether, all depending on the effect you are trying to achieve. We are going to finish things up by adding ethereal glitter to the skin. We are going to start by making our own fine glitter brush. It's incredibly simple. Take a default hard round brush and open up brush settings, window, brush settings. Now we are going to jack up the spacing, size jitter, and scattering. The size of the brush will vary. One to two pixels will get you a finer glitter, while three to four pixels will get you a slightly more chunky glitter. Also, don't forget to save this brush, checking both tool settings and size uh, so you don't have to keep remaking it later. Let's create a new normal layer either above or below our curves layer. Uh, if you place it below, your glitter will be brighter due to the curves layers, while if set above, the glitter effect will be a bit more subtle. Paint on the high points of the face and anywhere there is light. Having the glitter taper and become less concentrated, the darker the skin gets. This isn't to say you can't add glitter to the shadows. A touch of glitter in dark areas will help bring some lovely dimension and details to those areas. I like to use larger glitter for the body and keep the glitter on the face uh, smaller, more dainty. Use a fluffy eraser brush to help blend and taper out the edges of the glitter, smoothing out any harsh lines. Focus the glitter where you see pores and skin texture, and don't forget to match the sharpness of the skin you are painting on. The ear is slightly out of focus as well as the sides of the neck, so the glitter painted should be very slightly blurred. This may seem like a small detail, but it adds a beautiful texture to the skin and helps it bring so, so, so much detail to the overall image. And that does it for today. Tell me if you liked me walking through the color grade, or if it was a gigantic waste of time. I honestly never know. But with that, like if you like, subscribe if you really like, and let me know what you'd like to see next. I'm Abby Esparza with PhotoManipulation.com. See you next time.